Welcome in to Moving the Change, brought to you by Founders Federal Credit Union. I'm Kevin Thomas, alongside Drell Hendricks. We've got a great interview today, a recurring guest, very special guest, head coach Chad Wilk to the Oceanside Collegiate Land Sharks. Coach, how are you doing today? I'm doing good. How are y'all? Doing well. I appreciate your time, as always. If you guys are just checking us out, check us out on Facebook, Twitter, slash X, Instagram, YouTube, etc. at Moving Chains, M-O-V-I-N-C-H-A-I-N-S, movingchains.com. There's our website and our podcast on Apple, Spotify, Google, and more. Coach Wilkes is in his second season as the head coach of the Oceanside Collegiate Land Sharks. Coach, for people who may not have seen our interview with you last year, can you give the folks a little bit of background of how you got into coaching and how you got to where you are now with Oceanside? Uh, yeah, so it's my third head coaching job. Um, I was at my first head coaching job was at a school that doesn't even exist now uh, in C. Murray, combining with King Street, which I was pretty sad about. But um, yeah, I was there for two years. Uh, was super, super fortunate to even get in that job. I think I was. Hired at 24 and coached my first season um, at 25 uh, and was the athletic director, too. It was, um, <laughs> it was a lot, but I definitely paid my dues doing that, too. Um, but I was there for two years and then got to go to Lamar, which uh, which was a step up for me in a lot of a lot of ways. Um, and was there for three years. And uh, now, I'm, now I'm at Oceanside. Um, before that, I was luckily I was an assistant coach at Sumter High. Um, which has been cool to get to play them the last couple of years here at Oceanside again. Um, Coach Barnes is definitely one of my main mentors in my career. Um, and then before that, I was an assistant at Sherall, where I'm from. Coach Wilkes, before we jump into this year's team, uh, this edition of the Land Sharks, can you reflect on last season and that remarkable run to the state title game? Yeah, um, I've had so many people, uh, you know, talk about last year and uh for, from that time and how great it was and a lot of people like just within the school and um and everybody talks about that and, and and obviously there's a lot to be happy about and it was definitely my most fun year coaching you know there's a lot of times you get to the end of the year even in good years we've had um in the past and it's it is almost like uh you know there's one percent of you that's got a little bit of relief when the season's over because you know it's a lot you're in the in the foxhole in the grind every day last year was really the first year of my career where it was like i really there was zero percent of me that wanted the season to be over like whether we won or lost like i wanted to go to practice again the next day um just because and that says a lot about the kids and the community that we have um but ultimately we we didn't get what we wanted you know we did something for the first time in school history and and that's great and don't get me wrong i definitely look back on the on the good things that we did and it's great but it's you know deep down that's not really um i don't consider it super remarkable so and that's just what it is so coach looking at this year's team we're off to a good start so i think five and two right now what are kind of your your styles on both sides of the ball for people that haven't seen you guys play yeah we're very different to, to last year um uh, last year, we had a really big, experienced offensive line, um, you know, with a lot of good players. One of them just played at Georgia and is probably going to be starting at Florida, yeah. uh, starting against Florida in a couple weeks. So, um, you know, that that helps, right? So, and then it's, it's crazy. It's crazy. Think about this. We had a guy at left tackle who is – is the third tackle at Georgia. So with trust going down, he's going to start against Florida more than likely as a true freshman, our running back started his first game at Liberty and started for three games until he broke his run his collarbone. Um, another guard that we had is playing defensive line in North Greenville right now as a true freshman. Um, and then the, the, one of the juniors we had is going to West point as a defensive lineman. Like we were just really big and experienced and had a great running back. So we ran the ball a ton um, didn't throw the ball nearly as much as we're throwing it this year. We're getting pretty close. Uh, we'll have more passing yards this year by the end of the regular season than we finished with last year. Um, you know, we probably have like half as many rushing yards. So we're, we throw the ball a whole lot more. Um, the strength of our team is more of our receivers than than a, the running back room like it was last year. Um, you know, and, but defensively, we're, we're the same type of team. We're attacking pretty physical um, that's definitely what we hang our hat on, whether we are physical or not. We definitely we coach it to be physical, so um, pretty similar. But this year, our defense has, has been unbelievable. Um, we practice against those guys every day, and uh, that they, they do a really, really good job. Um, and the biggest thing as a team, we're much younger than we were last year, like significantly younger. We've had uh, freshmen get some carries in the backfield. We've had a ton of sophomores play. 
Um, we really only have seven seniors that get any playing time um, and really only five of those start. So uh, a very young team, which is exciting for the future for sure. So I got the net. We got Vaughn. We got Monroe. Who are my, we got Ben that you shouted out? Who who's the guy at North Timmy Greenville? Timmy Castine. That Timmy Castine. That's yeah, I, North that's Greenville what, now. Yeah. That, that's good awesome. group. Give good group. And then we had Zach guys Hagan on. Is- Zach Hagan on PWO'd at uh, Old Dominion, and unfortunately he tore his ACL in the preseason. But he was tracking to get some time, maybe as special teams or something, as a true freshman oh. too, as a preferred walk on. It's pretty incredible. It's a good group. Like I mentioned, Coach, we we like catching up with you. You know, it's our second time having you on the show, giving a, a some shine to the the coaches. But we got to go talk about the players now. Who are some special guys on this year's team? You know, that are having great seasons for you. Yeah, well, we just talked about Ben Britton. Um, he's he's unbelievable. He is the one guy we pretty much have twenty one starters, um, but we don't we don't have twenty two because he starts both ways and he plays every play of every game. He has for two years, never comes off the field. Um, you know, he's the heartbeat of our team for sure. We go as he goes with even off the field, his energy and leadership and what he does in the weight room and in the meeting room. It's incredible. You know, he's a kid that's going to West Point over a lot of other programs. You know, a lot of kids go to service academies because that's the best football program they have, that offer they have. Um, but he has Liberty and James Madison, these great group of five programs, and he's choosing to go to, to West Point. And that, that says a lot about – a kid, he's certainly not the only one, but any kid that chooses to do something like that, um, you know, says a lot about them. And, and that's sure. the kind of uh, players that those programs have. Um, you know, so he, he's 100% the heartbeat of our team. Um, our whole defense is really, really good. Somebody asked me, like, who's our great players on defense? They're all really good. Um, our middle linebacker, Miles Robinson, is, is really good. He was an all state player um, at Waccamaw last year and, and moved here. And he's, he's unbelievable. I mean, he's as good a linebacker as as I think I've ever coached. He's really, really special. Um, and then he's going to go play college football and make somebody really happy next year. Um, he's awesome. We got another kid, Max Mormon. We moved him from linebacker to defensive end this year. Um, he's another – he's going to be a Division One type player. Um, and then we have a sophomore, Mike Jones, who plays defensive line, who's already got a Citadel offer, um, got a Citadel offer right after his freshman year. So he's a guy that's going to be an FCS Group of Five um, kid going forward, and he's already a really, really good player. And – as we get to crunch time, he'll play more um, on the offensive side of the ball for sure. Um, and then on offense, our quarterback, Edward Reidenbach, took us to a state championship. Um, didn't start off the year as good as he wanted to, as good as we wanted him to. Um, he was playing against a lot of really, really good defenses. You know, that's South Florence yeah. defense. Yeah. As good a defense as I've probably ever played against um, as a coach. Uh, you know, so they've made a lot of people struggle. Um, you know, and he's breaking in with a lot of new offensive linemen, a completely, completely brand new skill position group, all new receivers, new running backs. Um, so they're really starting to jail now. Like I said, we're on track to, to have more passing yards and passing touchdowns and things like that than we did last year. And we've leaned into that some and, and he's continued to improve. But again, he's a great leader and, and he's steady and he runs the ball. He's our leading rusher this year, too. Um, so he does a great job. And then Will Virgilio is is on pace to have a, a really good year. Um, I think he's over 500 receiving yards, um, which isn't something that's super common with with me. I do like to run the ball. Um, you know, so he's had a special year, and he's had a couple punt return touchdowns and stuff like that too. So he's a d- dynamic playmaker as a junior. You know, a lot of these guys are, are pretty young. Um, we don't have – you know, we just don't have that many seniors that play. Well, Coach, like we said, you're off to a great start. You're kind of in the middle of region play right now. How pleased are you with where your team's at and, and you know, compared to where you want them to be here a couple weeks down the road? Um, yeah, I mean, I'm not happy. We got to get a whole lot better, uh, a whole lot better. We're, we're young, but it's it's something we expected. I, I told anybody that asked, it wasn't going to be like last year. I really do think that our, whatever you want to call it, one to 25 on the roster is more talented than last year. I really do. But the top five, of course, is it. The, the top five last year was was definitely more talented than this year because I mean they're they're Division One football players playing as freshmen. So, but but the depth that we have, I mean, last year we had all of those guys had to go both ways. They started at you know we had I don't know maybe 11, 12, 13 total starters. Like everybody was going both ways, and this year only one person has to go both ways. So we have much more depth um, and good depth, like real depth that we can actually put in the game and rotate in. And we've had to play a bunch of different uh, 
offensive line combinations, which last year would have really, really hurt us. Uh, our, our, unfortunately, our one of our senior captains, Finn Johnson, who's another really good player, he's a returning three-year starter, he broke his leg against South Florence and, and is pretty much out for the year. And so that's called – like, if that would have happened last year, as good as our offensive line was, there really wasn't, like, another guy that would have – been great for us that would have really hurt us whereas this year we were able to to plug and play and and still beat Carolina Forest and and be competitive against Sumter and I don't think that would have happened last year but we knew going into the year it was going to take longer it's younger kids um I mean it really is crazy how many junior sophomores and freshmen we have playing now so we knew it was going to take longer to jail and so I'm not happy but last year I think we peaked whenever we beat Sumter whatever, September 19th or something, and we peaked and we were never that good again. So this year we've made a very concerted effort to try to keep climbing the mountain all the way to the top of the year, to uh, to, uh, to the end of the year this year. Um, and so hopefully if we get back to where we were last year, we'll be able to perform a little bit better. Coach, we're winding down the season, but I want to talk about your schedule a little bit. We mentioned it earlier. You know, your non-region is is tough, man. You had South Florence, Sumter, Carolina Forest, Marlboro County, and Louisville. Uh, but as you've gotten into region play, it, it's kind of you know slacked off a little bit because you don't really have those high-profile you know programs in your your area. Does this help or hurt your team as you prepare for that playoff run? Um, we're trying to keep it from hurting. You know, it it, it doesn't help but you know it's it's just like anything it's all about how you take it um we do things tried to learn from last year and try to do some things differently that we didn't do last year and that our depth allows us to do for example we do now we didn't in non-conference but now that we're in the region schedule we do ones versus ones at practice which we would never do outside of spring and maybe a little bit in the preseason i've never done that before once you actually get into the season we do it every day now um because it gives us a chance to to get good work. Um, and that's something that we learned from last year um, and something, again, our depth allows. So you try to learn from last year. I, I do think it hurt us last year. You know, there's their 16-year-old kids and in our cases, some of them, 14, anywhere from 14 to 17, 18, whatever. And so, like, I think back to how I was as a, as a player. Um, and I 100%, no matter what my coaches told us, I 100% thought going into games, some games that we were going to kill other teams. Like, <laughs> yeah, like there, there's, uh, it didn't, and, and I actually tell our kids, like, I don't, I'm really big and I've always done this. I'm really big on like, I never wanted my coaches to, to lie to me or try to cover stuff up. Like I'll tell our kids exactly what I think about the opponent coming up, um, good or bad, where I think if they're better than us, if they're even with us, if they're worse than us, I tell our kids um, because that sets what the ex expectation is. The expectation is about who we're playing it's about what we do um you know and so we try to harp on that a lot but it's really hard to get 16 year old kids to keep that same level of of focus and energy um when they know that they're that they're going to and the reality is what the reality is they yeah. know they're going to go into some of these games and be heavy heavy favorites um and can probably win not playing as well um so it's for us it's about being super focused in practice um as coaches and making sure that we don't let that that level drop. And we've made a very, very concerted effort um, from last year to, to do that. It's also helped this year that, again, I don't think we've played nearly as good as we did last year. So it's easy. Like, I can put on the film and show them that they haven't done good enough. Um, sure. And so that helps, you know, keep it keep it together. Whereas last year, you know, we beat something or 28 to nothing. Coming off of that, it's hard to – it's hard to say we were too we were real bad at a lot of stuff. Um <laughs> yeah, so this year sure. I put on the tape of us losing to something and say we got it, we obviously can do this, 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 this better. Um, and that's definitely helped. Coach, talking about your region though, I think week 10 you will have the region title on the line against Timberland. What have you seen from the Wolves on film so far this year? Uh, you know, what do you think of that program? Hundred percent better than they were last year, no question about it. Um, which I didn't know really a ton about like the roster and who they had leaving and coming back. I know they had the really good linebacker who played some running back last year. Um, can't remember his name. Uh, Jenkins, uh, I think. Jenkins, right? yeah, 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 yeah. So I, I just – I knew they were losing him, but I didn't know a ton about the makeup of their roster. But um, we've gotten a couple of crossover tapes, like, in, with region now. And, uh, yeah, I, I think they're 100% better than they were last year. Even last year, and it's Timberland, so they're always going to be athletic and they're always going to play hard. Like, you can – probably until – Timberland shuts down or or <laughs> they stop playing football someday. Timberland's going to have athletes and they're going to play hard. And they were beating us last year at halftime 12 to 6. Um, now we ended up 
coming back and then scoring a bunch unanswered um, in the second half and, and kind of winning a little bit going away. But again, I don't think they're playing better than they were at this time last year. We're playing worse. So if we were only 30 points better than them last year, that gap has certainly closed um, to where we are now. And so I'm looking forward to it. I definitely think it's, it's far, far from a walkover this year. Um, ton of athletes. They've got a lot of speed at receiver, um, which again, I, I think they had last year. Um, but it just seems like, and again, I'm not, I haven't been studying them specifically, but it just seems anecdotally like they're getting the ball to those guys deeper down the field more than they did last year. Last year, I remember, you know, watching tape, especially in preparation for them. And it was, it was a ton of run game and some play action off of that. And this year, I feel like it's, it's pretty, kind of the opposite. I've seen a lot of, a lot more pure drop back, uh, drop back game and, and play actioning, but not as much just line up and run it right at you. Like I felt like it was last year. So yeah, it says I'm, I'm expecting a, a really good game. Um, and, and that's going to be great for us in the playoffs because the teams that, that we play in, in the playoffs are going to be super athletic if nothing else. So it's going to be great preparation for that for sure. Coach, I want to backtrack a little bit. You know, you keep talking about, you know, your experience, what you've learned as a coach, you know, because you're, you're still a young coach, young guy, you know, even though you've attained this high level of success at multiple programs. Uh, but I want to talk about your staff a little bit. Have you guys, did you keep the same staff from last year? You know, have you guys been able to grow together? Uh, but what's kind of the dynamics there with, with your staff? Um, yeah, kind of, I guess, mostly new. Uh, more than half of them are new. Uh, so we've, we've, we are super fortunate. We're super fortunate last year with, with what we had. Um, but last year we had uh, co-defense coordinators. Um, one of them is Dave Salazzo, which is – he's our defensive line coach and defensive front. Um, coached at the Citadel for 10 years, was Georgia Tech's D-line coach for a couple years uh, with uh, Ralph – not Ralph Regan, George O'Leary, and then went with Ralph Regan to Maryland and was his D-line coach and – uh, recruiting coordinator for that run where Friedman was at Maryland, where they won the ACC championship and went to an Orange Bowl and had the, all the Under Armour commercials and stuff. And he's featured in one of them. And our kids love yeah. talking to him about that, <laughs> like all the click clack stuff um, oh, yeah. from back in the day. But uh, so he was there during that run. And then I actually played against him when I was at UNH. He was a defensive line coach at Villanova and we played each other in a CAA matchup. Nice. Um, and so I pick at him all the time because we won and I played poorly, <laughs> but we did win. I probably played my worst game, but we won. And so I, I pick on him all the time about that. And uh, and so, yeah, so we've got him. I mean, you can't you can't uh, recreate that kind of experience in high school football. And and I've I've certainly never been around someone who knows more about even front defensive line play than that man. I mean, he knows it inside out, probably uh, talks about in the sleep. I mean, and that's, that's, he hones in on that. But last year, our other, our defensive co other co defense coordinator who controlled the back end was Justin McIntyre, who left to go be a GA at Rice, um, which was a great nice. opportunity for him, you know, Division One G, and he's young. I mean, he was a first year out of college, um, you know, kind of saw what he could do in the spring and really wasn't anticipating necessarily him, him having that role for us last year. Um, but he did such a good job early. Um, that, that we gave it, but he's young, he's only 24, 25. And so him going and getting to do that's a great opportunity. So we were able to replace him with Brent LaPrade, who, you know, everybody knows the LaPrade name, of course, is Steve's son. And he was the defensive coordinator at Fort D for gosh, nine years, I guess, through the run, including the state championship, and then was the offense coordinator the last three. Um, you know, Steve needed him to flip, needed more help on offense, so flipped him over and, and he was the offense coordinator. But we were able to hire him to to replace and, and to call the defense and, and control the back end. And he's been, he's been awesome for us. And then our offensive line coach was Antoine Robbins. He actually left. He's a, a former game cop, was a team captain at South Carolina, um, coached at Coastal for 10 years, another, you know, great coach. He left to go start Atlantic um, Charter School in Horry County. Um, so we had to replace him and we were able to replace him with John Patterson, who again is a name that a lot of people around here know, coached at the Citadel, coached at Lenore Ryan, but he was also the head coach at Providence Day in the 90s and was the head coach at James Island um, in the mid-2000s in between a couple of his college stops. So, um, again, we, we had a couple guys leave, but we were really able to, able to replace them with some with some really good guys. We had to replace a wide receivers coach who we replaced with uh, Dr. Mark Hartman, who was Sam Hartman's dad, who was here before when Sam played here. Um, but and, and he's with us every single day at practice, but he's had to miss – I think two or three games because he's having to fly out to sure. wherever to watch Sam play. Um, but it's great having him on staff and then he cares a ton 
um, and gives a lot. So we've had a couple movement uh, or a little bit of movement on the coach staff, but we were able to replace them with with great people. And um, again, the the fun that I have coaching is is certainly higher than it has been anywhere else I've been. Um, and it's not just because of coaching or whatever, but um, they definitely make it stress free. I don't have to worry. I worry about what I worry about, which is coordinate the offense and then all the other crap that comes outside of that, that I actually spend more time on, um, you know, but, but they allow me to focus on that. I know that those spots are going to be taken care of. So coach talking about some of that other stuff you have to deal with. Uh, Oceanside Collegiate is a charter school and obviously they have been all in the news in South Carolina this year. Charters have, you know, and really it feels like it's more focused towards gray collegiate and some of those guys instead of you guys, but you know, gray situation, every team's forfeit against them. They're having to find games now and whatnot in the Midlands. What do you think about, you know, what's going on there? Teams just refusing to play. Like, I guess, what are your overall thoughts on the whole situation? Um, so, one, I think I have a pretty unique perspective because not only have I been the head coach in just a, a regular traditional public school, but, I mean, I really do believe if it wasn't for the reclassification that put uh, – a couple of the private schools down, mainly Southside Christian and 1A, I'd be sitting here with at least one state championship right now. Um, yeah. In 20, we uh, we were winning six to three deep into the second half on the road at Southside Christian and ended up, they hit a pass down the seam and, and ended up, that put them up 10 to six in the fourth quarter. And then they tacked on another one late, but they went on to a state championship and beat Lakeview by like 30 or 40 mm -hmm. or whatever. So I really do feel like we were we were we were in a good spot there and 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 almost had them. Um, so I feel like and then they came down and killed us the next year in the mm -hmm. upper state championship game. But a very unique perspective from because and also while at Lamar I played Gray in the regular season too um, and lost on a two point conversion attempt at the end. Um, so I feel like and now obviously coaching here I feel like I have more perspective or a better perspective than anybody because I've been on the side where it is very, very much cost me. And and I can tell y'all this too, literally the day that the realignment happened, uh, I guess 19 going into 20, it happened like December 15th is usually when it comes out. Um, and we had like our, our faculty and staff uh, uh, party, Christmas party that afternoon. And the AD, our AD walks in and tells me what the reclassification is. And obviously I knew because Southside that year, Abbeville had won the two-way state championship. Southside Christian had beat them in the regular season and then lost to them in the playoffs. Um, and so I knew how good Southside Christian was. So, and our AD came in and told me that Southside Christian had gotten moved down. And I remember like calling my dad that night and being like, well, I think we're, it's going to be hard. It just got yeah, a whole yeah. lot harder. Yeah. Um, you know, so, so I've been there where it's caused a, a lot of, uh, a lot of pain and has and is, is, is definitely been a barrier um, to our success at Lamar, without a doubt. Um, but the thing is, is I completely understand everyone who even complains about it, maybe, and, and feels negatively about any anything. Not just I'm not even saying charter schools and private schools. I bet that there's a few schools um, throughout time that that is probably pretty frustrated with Dutch Fork, and it's probably yeah. pretty <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I would guess. Um, you know, but but these things, and I get so I get, I, and I've got fr coaching friends who I've talked to who are in regions and districts with with charter schools, and and we have these conversations, and and I tell them like, I get that you would be that you would even complain about it or whatever that it's not ideal for for your setup all the time, but the the flip side of that is it's always been that way, and, and it's always going to be that way. Now I feel like people just have something that they can put a name on it, you know, and actually charter schools probably, and actually a lot of people don't even realize that the charter schools aren't private schools. We are yeah. public schools. We don't get to pick our students. We are literally by law, like we would like our principal and everybody, they'd all go to jail if they pick their students. Like literally it's, it's a state law that we are a public school, just like everybody else. If you apply to come to Oceanside, you have the exact same opportunity to get in as any single other student, whether you play any sport or don't play any other sport. Um, and like the numbers about how high our actual athletic population is in the school are way off. And so a lot of people don't understand the facts, but even with that, I get the a hundred percent get complaining about it. When I was at Lamar, I 100% was like, if Southside Christian didn't exist, my life would be better. hundred <laughs> percent. I'd have a state championship. Yeah. That would be, or would have had a better shot at a state championship. That's great. But now I'm at a charter school and I'm in two way. If, if Abbeville didn't exist, my 
opportunity to win a state championship would be way better. Yeah. So it doesn't that that's my whole thing with everybody. When I was in high school, we lost to Bishop England in the lower state playoffs in baseball twice. Nobody forfeited. No, we went down and played them. And when we were on the bus coming back, we wished that Bishop England didn't exist, but it does, <laughs> and it's existed forever. Um, and so that's my whole thing is that that whatever you want to complain about it, and it is all competition based. It's all things that you can apply to other schools and to things that have gone on forever. Um, you know, whatever it is. And, and again, I'll, I'll always say, you know, Dylan's run the last 10 years and Abbeville's run the last 14 years and Dutch Fork's run and all this is, you know, the charter schools have won one football state championship. So that's the one yeah. sport I'll talk, I'll talk about. They won one and they've only been to two um, mm -hmm. in, in a few years. And then Abbeville's been to a lot. Um, you know, so that that that's my feeling on it. Get the complaining, um, but obviously, and again, the forfeiting. If if I, again, I played great in the non-region regular season where we sure could have forfeited, they'd had to fire me. If, if they, my superintendent would have came to me and told me that we're forfeiting that game against Gray when I was at Lamar, they'd had to fire me. Um, you know, and that's just how that's that's how I feel about it. So, and and you do have a lot of schools like Coach Bullware in Louisville. And I don't think this is an accident, right? So you've got a guy who's in 1A um, who's trying to build a program, mm -hmm. calls me and is reaching out to Oceanside to play, all right, because mm -hmm. he wants his program to be at a certain level. And that goes along with, I think he, they scrimmage Dorman and Spartanburg and all these teams, right? So he wants to do a certain thing, and he all he cares about is competition, mm -hmm. which is – I align more with that. That's the part that I care about. Um, you know, so that's my feel. And again, being on both sides, that's in that's counting everybody thinking all these myths out there that that are true that aren't true. They're just they're not. Um, they're they're not. So you know, it is what it is. You can look at a lot of schools around the state um, and whatever you can, whatever they think that they're accusing. And I'll say Oceanside. I don't even speak to Gray. Um, if anybody, whatever anybody's saying about Oceanside, it's it's been going on forever everywhere. Oceanside wins a ton of girls' soccer state championships. <laughs> Wando wins a ton of girls' soccer state championships in 5A. Like, it is what it is. Coach, we appreciate you explaining that. You know, you put it well. Um, you know, didn't have to, so we really appreciate you tackling that. We've had Coach Holmes on a few times, and he's he's done the same thing, you know, just explained his perspective, so we do appreciate that. Take your financial game to the next level with Founders Federal Credit Union. Reach your full potential. Relax. Join Founders today. Visit an office near you or relaxjoinfounders.com to apply. Federally insured by NCUA, member qualification required. Let's shift gears a little bit. Uh, we're going to go to some easier questions, get you off the hot seat a little bit. Pre-game, you're uh, riding to whatever stadium or, you know, you guys are playing a home game. What's on the pre-game playlist? What are you listening to getting ready for the game? New, I've got a new move this year, um, which is movies. I've stopped listening. Whoa. To music. Yeah. Okay. So before we leave, um, like because typically our way trips because we're in Charleston and where we got to go. I mean, like you might uh, put on your GPS and figure out where how long it's going to take to get to Lake Mary and like on in the morning and it might say 45 minutes but friday afternoon it actually took two hours so basically yeah. there's nowhere that we can go that's not going to be an hour and a half yeah. so there's always enough time for a movie so it's completely new for me i take my ipad and before we leave and i don't even decide until like right before we leave after we've done everything and i'll download a couple of movies to choose from from my ipad um and so there's a lot of movies that like came out a while ago um that i wanted to catch up on like might have came out 10 years ago that have been um, trying to catch up on this year, like uh, the Imitation Game was okay. one. Um, the Prestige was another one that that is an old school movie or a little bit older. I did watch the new Air movie about Michael Jordan this year, yep. um, which yeah. was fantastic, by the way. Great movie. I, I, was. I thought it was going to be. It was unbelievable. Um, so yeah, that that's my new move. Before that, it would have been essentially just a, a rotation between Biggie, Tupac, and Guns N' Roses. Those three. <laughs> I love it. That's awesome. That's awesome. So, Coach, we mentioned you guys played for state last year at Benedict. This year, the titles have been moved to South Carolina State. Do you like it being there at SC State? Would you rather go back to Benedict, maybe go to Williams Bryce? What would you prefer as a coach? Um, I don't know. I guess I haven't thought about it a ton as a coach. I think typically, 
you know, most coaches, I think, kind of have the same mindset of, you know, if you get there, you're happy, which wherever you know, it is. And, right. Yeah. Right. And, and I think I generally like I really don't care, you know, if, if you're in the game as a coach. But I do know as a player and getting to play in two state championship games at Williams Bryce, like I get the whole thing of a smaller atmosphere. It does make it feel more closed and all that kind of stuff. But um, it, it did mean a lot to me as a as a kid. Um, going and playing in Williams Bryce, and I think it did to everybody. And so, you know, I, I kind of miss that for the players. That's something that you get to say, you know, whether you go on to play. Uh, I've got a cousin who didn't go on to play college football or do anything else. Who played? Who played at Lakeview and played in a state championship game in Williams Bryce uh, back in 2001, I think. And, and that's something that he still gets to talk about. You know, that was his last football game he got to play in that kind of environment. So. I guess I would always prefer that just because I do think it's a special experience for the kids. But when I was an AD, we we had these a couple of meetings um, where they, you know, came in and talked about all these different options and stuff. And, and to be honest with you, one A, I was a one A AD, and one A doesn't get as many votes as as everybody else. So I don't even know if they cared about what we thought. But I just remember like not really ever getting a great reason why we couldn't do. Um, Williams Bryce or, or Clemson again. Um, you know, I know it, it to a degree it comes down to money, but I do think there were some options at times for us. And I don't know what it is now. That would have been like in 2017 or 2018. Um, you know, but I, I remember sitting in those meetings thinking, like, I really do feel like if, if we wanted to make this happen, we could. Um, you know, but as a coach, I, I guess I don't care. I know when I was in high school at Sherrard, our big rival was Chesterfield and, and they were dominant. They won three straight state championships from my sophomore to senior year. But they were in 1A, so they had to go play in SC State every year while we were going to Williams-Brice. And I do – I kind of – act to be honest with you, actively remember, like, I'm really glad we get to play at Williams-Brice while they go play at SC yeah. State. So, um, but as a coach, I really – and I've always felt, you know, if we're in the game, I really don't care where they play it. I'll be, I'll be happy. Last time you joined us, you know, it was on the phone. You're in your car, all fresh off the practice field. I look at the background today. You got – Settled in into yeah, the a place, L- looking it. looking good. Box is is right behind you. <laughs> <laughs> it so just just say it. We're close enough now. <laughs> so say that you're settled in there. We ask all the coaches, we're foodies. We need to know some restaurants. Where are your spots down there in the Charleston area? My God, I mean Charleston is it's insane. Um, and I do like we we always go. We've kind of, me and my wife, we've kind of picked like a different city to go every year during the July 4th dead week period. It's like the one time yeah. that we kind of know we're going to have off every year. And I tell people all that, like, we, we've been to all these different cities, whatever. And I tell people all the time, it's like, I go to eat. Like, that's yeah. like, yeah. I went to Chicago. I went to Chicago to eat. We go to Boston. Yeah. I'm, going to Boston to eat. I'm going to New York to eat. Um, we went to Montreal, went to Montreal to eat. So, being in Charleston is is really, really nice. The, I'd say the number one go to, and there's a couple reasons for it. Um, and the the first reason that there's three locations. So whether you're downtown, you can go. Whether you're on IOP or Sullivan's, you can go. And then whether you're, there's one literally like two tenths of a mile from from Oceanside um, and here in North Mount Pleasant, and that's home team barbecue. You can yes. get the barbecue and you can get the wings, and they're both phenomenal. Um, the ribs are phenomenal there. So that is that's kind of the e- – I think me and my wife probably eat there more than anywhere else because – the amount of locations and how good it is. They actually um, sponsored our coaches meetings last year. So they hooked us up um, every Sunday afternoon. So, so that's, that's definitely a a main go-to. The other one is Lewis's barbecue that I like a lot. And the specific thing about that is the brisket there, I think is better than home team. Um, You know, so get it, I go there to get the brisket sandwich. If I just want regular pulled pork or whatever, Um, I think home team is better. And obviously home team, has the wings too. So, um, yeah, so, so a big, a big, uh, barbecue guy. And then there's an Italian restaurant here in, in, uh, Mount, Ple- Mount Pleasant that's called Casa de pa- Pauzo or something. It means like crazy house or something. Um, that okay. I like a lot too. It's just, it's just really, really good. So, hey, you're speaking my language of the barbecue. I mean, huh? I mean, my God, I'm, I'm leaving them. I mean, we're, we're really, we've been here for, a year and a half or a little over a year and a half. And there's still so many that are on our list um, that we, and then there's also the fine dining, like Pugin's Porch we've been to. That's awesome. I mean, there's, there's a ton, there's everything here. That's unbelievable. Well, last one, last one for you, coach last year, guys, you know, lower state state champs, 
made it all the way to the title game. What will it take to get back to that position this year? And you think this team's you know poised to make a deep run in the playoffs? Um, I, for us, it, it's pretty simple. Um, we've got to be able to run the ball better than what we have been. I think we do a lot of of trying to self scout during the year to to see where we're at, and and that's really that's really where we're lacking in a lot of efficiency. I think our defensive like efficiency type numbers that I think you can really golf are, are all better than last year um, for the most part, like game to game anyway. Um, so, but for us, the one clear thing that it's like, what, if you want to compare to last year, um, which again, we weren't good enough last year either was, was our run game efficiency wasn't, wasn't as good, but we've done a lot to try to improve that. And, and, and even sch- schematically and all that kind of stuff, but just the way we practice and stuff to try to, give our guys a chance because again they're younger it's not I mean I think I can't wait for for what our offensive line is going to look like um in the future I mean they're all really really young so so that's great one one senior starter which has been um the other four are all coming back so so that's great um I'm I'm sorry with two yeah we do have two our right guard is also a senior um but but we've we've got a ton of talent that's young up up front. So we're trying to do more in practice to make sure we put an emphasis and a focus on being able to run the ball better. Um, and, and I do think that's really what it's going to come down to, and and not just you know getting necessarily more yards play to play, but really being more physical up front and, and being able to come off the ball and dominate teams and and really set the tone because I do think we do that on defense and we haven't been able to do that um, on offense here in spurts. Here in spurts, we we got the ball on the one yard line against uh, Carolina Forest and went 99 yards in nine minutes uh, to to beat a really really good Carolina Forest team, and that was mostly done on the ground when they knew we were going to run it, and we went and got it. Um, you know, so so that we've shown that we can do it, but anytime you're a younger team, that consistency is what's been lacking, and and we got to get better at that. And and I think that's 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 the number one thing, and it's very easy to be able to look at it, and it's very clear. Um, in a lot of other areas that we've got better at since last year, that's the one that we've got to definitely improve. And again, we we can't just be as good as we were last year. We have to be better. You know, last year we we lost and we're really never in the game. So um, definitely got to get better at that. Well, this has been great. I want everyone to go check out Coach Wilkes and Landshark's program on social media. They do a great job on Facebook and Twitter, posting updates about the program and highlights on the kids, stuff like that. So definitely give them a follow. Like I mentioned, check us out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, et cetera, at Move and Change, website moveandchange.com podcast on apple spotify google and more moving the change brought to you by founders federal credit union drill any else for coach we'll let him go today coach thank you so much for joining us as always you know uh, we really appreciate your time we know you got a lot going on this time of the season as you prepare you know for region championship playoffs and things like that so we appreciate that we'll um, definitely have to talk a little bit off air about some food stuff so looking forward to that once <laughs> we once we get once, once we wrap this up but just <laughs> thanks for everything and, and stay healthy you guys keep balling love it absolutely i appreciate it thanks coach we appreciate it look forward to catching you here on the stretch run uh best of the rest of the way all right thank you i appreciate it